Hello, old enemies. How are you doing? In the previous episode, we abstracted out a bunch of code from the player class and divided it into two abstract classes, one called Game Object and another one called Circle. And in this episode, we will implement an enemy class with Super AI and add it to the game. We will start off in a split view between the enemy class that we created in the last episode and the player class. Then we have to decide what parts of the player class that will be the same in the enemy class. To make this easier, we can write a description of the class to clearly state its purpose. We write that enemy is a character which always moves in the direction of the player. The enemy class is an extension of a circle, which is an extension of a game object. So now when we have decided that the enemy will be a circle, we can extend the enemy class by the abstract circle class. And by doing so and hitting alt return and selecting implement methods, we see that we're entitled to implement an update method. We also need to create a constructor to match the super class constructor. In the super constructor, we want to supply the color we want the enemy to have. So we can go to the player class and copy the contextcompat.getColor method and paste it instead of the color argument in the enemy class. But we want to change the color from the color value player to enemy. And then we can go inside resources values colors.xml and copy and paste the player color and change the name to enemy and select a new color for it, for instance blue. Now, if we compare the enemy and player constructor, we see that we have a joystick in the player's constructor. But since we don't want a joystick to control the enemy, we continue and start thinking of the update method. We will plan the enemy's update method in a very systematic way and write down comments for what we need the method to do. We write that we want the method to update the velocity of the enemy so that the velocity is in the direction of the player. Then we write down all the necessary steps. First, calculate vector from enemy to player in x and y coordinates. Then, calculate absolute distance between enemy and player. Set velocity in direction to the player and update the position of the enemy. We start by calculating the vector from the enemy to the player. Write double distance to player x equals position x minus position x, where position x belongs to the super class of enemy and is thus the enemy's position in x. Then copy and paste the statement and change the variables from x to y. We don't have access to the player here, but we will take care of that later. Now when we have two variables describing the vector from the enemy to the player, we can calculate the absolute distance between the enemy and the player. We write double distance to player equals get distance between objects. And we supply this as the first argument referring to the enemy class and the player as the second. We don't have this method yet, but we'll implement it later. From the vector and distance between the enemy and the player, we can calculate the direction from the enemy to the player by writing double direction x equals distance to player x divided by distance to player. We then copy and paste the statement and change the variables from x to y. In the calculation of the direction in x and y, I intended to protect the calculation from division by zero, but I somehow managed to place the if statement around the set velocity statement that we will write below. But no worries, this will not affect the result that much, and we can change the code in the future. Now, we set the velocity of the enemy in the direction to the player. We type velocity x equals direction x times max speed. Then copy and paste the statement and change the variables from x to y. Then we write else and set the velocity in x and y to zero. Finally, we update the enemy's position by typing position x plus equals velocity x. Then copy and paste the statement and change x to y. We are now done implementing the update method, but we still have some non-declared and unimplemented fields and methods to take care of. The field player is not recognized by the class, so we need to add a player somehow to the class. To do this, we can go to the enemy's constructor and replace the color argument with the player, and then in the body, write this.player equals player, hit alt return and create field player. Next, we need to implement the getPositionX method, so we hit alt return and select create method getPositionX. We get prompted with the option to create this method in either the player, circle or game object class. We select the game object since this method is useful for all game objects. Then copy and paste the method and exchange the x for y.
Thereafter, we implement the getDistanceBetweenObjects method. Since we are finding the distance between two different objects, we want to make this method general in the sense that it can be used on all game objects. Therefore, we write game object in front of the method name and hit Alt Return and select Create Method in Game Object. We change the type of the first argument to game object and name it obj1 and name the second object obj2. Then we use the Pythagorean theorem to get the distance between the objects. What we want this method to return is the square root of the distance between the objects in x squared plus the distance of the objects in y squared. The last missing piece in the enemy class is the max speed constant. We can copy and paste the max speed declaration from the player class and set the speed pixels per second to player.speed pixels per second. But in order to access it, we have to make it public. So we hit Alt Return and select Make Public. Now, when the enemy class is done, we need to change the arguments to both the player's and the enemy's constructor because of the changes we did in the last episode. We need to supply the joystick to the player class. Then we can just copy the constructor argument and paste them in the enemy's constructor and change the second argument from joystick to player. And we can also change the position of the enemy so it doesn't spawn on top of the player. Then we have to update and draw the enemy. So we go to the draw method and type enemy.drawCanvas. And in the update method, we type enemy.update. Now we're done and we can hit run to start the game. We see the enemy getting drawn on top of the player, and when we try to move the player, the enemy is still on top. This is because the enemy has the same speed as the player, so we need to scale it down to make it chase the player at a distance. Go back to the enemy class and multiply the speed by 0.6 to get 60% of the player's speed. Then hit run again, and now we see how the player gets chased by the enemy. Now we're done with the functional part of this episode. But since we now have four different classes that relates to game objects, we will package these classes together. We create a package called object, and then we move the circle, enemy, game object, and player class to the new package. But we get some problems by doing this, since classes inside a package need a public modifier to be accessed from other packages. Classes without access modifiers are private by default, so we need to go inside each of our classes that are being used by other packages and change the access to public. We can now run the app and see that the game is still working. That was everything for this time. If you like these videos and you want to support me, you can head over to my Patreon page and become a patron for as little as $1 per month. You will then get access to my Patreon exclusive series on how I became a YouTuber, where I from the 1st of August 2019 will upload one video per month where I go into detail on how to create YouTube videos and how the creative process looks like. Thank you guys for watching. In the next episode, we will look at collision detection and also spawn more enemies to the game. See you in the next episode, and don't forget to like and subscribe.